Gold and silver appear to be putting in the pullback that I have been waiting for. Hopefully, this pullback continues. I was uh, meaning to, to make a purchase, but didn't have the, the capital to make the purchase that I wanted uh, back during the big pullback in March. And then even when uh, silver was at like 17 bucks, 18 bucks, I wanted to make purchases then, didn't have the cash. Then when I had the cash, gold and silver started rising. And I was just kicking myself in the butt because I was waiting for a pullback from $18 uh, and $19. And it never came along, uh, but gold and silver have started that pullback now. So first, we're going to take a look at the U.S. dollar. And I want to start this off by showing you uh, this long-term chart that goes back to 1980, and uh, or 85, I guess. And what you see here, yeah, 85. Um, this is a dollar index where the dollar is being measured as, against a basket of other currencies. And they're all falling in value. That's what inflation is. And all, the whole world experiences rising prices over long periods of time. That means that all currencies are falling over long periods of time. But this is, gold, is, the, this is the U.S. dollar falling faster than the other currencies. And then the other currencies falling faster than the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar falling faster than the other currencies. And the other currencies falling faster than the U.S. dollar. But going back to the six-month chart, you see the dollar has been falling for about four months, much faster than the other currencies. But it looks like you know it may have uh, pulled the ripcord on its parachute, and the other currencies are now falling faster than the U.S. dollar since the beginning of August. Uh, is this going to have a breakout? There's a little uh, triangle pattern there. Uh, is it going to have a breakout to the upside and a rally? I certainly hope so, because that would be a factor that would take gold and silver down and uh, give us one last chance to uh, make another nice purchase before uh, what I see as inevitable. I believe that we are going to experience a huge disruption. I think we're going to see uh, a freezing of the monetary system one day that uh, but I'm hoping that if if this rises this could give us a breather and maybe it'll be one two three years away and not this year if it keeps on falling uh, we could be in some trouble and gold will just keep on rising and I want the longest I, I see that what they've done is going to have really bad consequences no matter what they do. There isn't anything that they can do at this point because the world's central banks pushed almost every asset class into hyper bubbles. And then we had this global health problem. Uh, and I can't mention the name because uh, we, we might uh, have fewer views in the future if I do. Uh, so there's certain things that I can't say anymore be because of, uh, um, well, censorship. Um, anyway, uh, this uh, if it breaks out to the upside and keeps on going for a little while, that's a very good thing as far as having more time to do this. It means that the monetary system isn't showing stress problems where it could fall apart any minute. If you look at this chart here that uh, this in this trader's blog, uh, this is the same six month chart, but he's extended a little rally here and then uh, going back down uh, several months from now. Uh, and if it breaks out of this channel, uh, you know, one way or the other, we'll either be in for an extension of our, a reprieve, uh, not a reprieve, but uh, extension to, it's like filing an extension for your taxes. Uh, we'd be getting more time to be able to get prepared. But what has that done for gold? Uh, gold peaked a few days ago and has been doing a pullback. So it peaked on August 6th. And today is the first big day of pullback. You can see that during this um, whole, the whole time on this chart, uh, the only pullback that I see that's uh, larger or as large is right here back on March 12th. So uh, this is a six-month chart of gold. And um, then silver uh, is also falling. But note 
this uh, green line and the orange line. The green line is the 10-day moving average. The orange line is the 50-day moving average. So you take the price action from the last 10 days and add them all up and divide them by 10 and you've got the average. So this, the dot on the end of that line is the average of the last 10 days of, of price movement. This dot is the last 50 days of price movement. Uh, and there's uh, 10, 20, 50, uh, 100, and 200 day moving averages that seem to be important uh, support and resistance points for technical analysis and uh, traders that trade on technical analysis. Notice that silver has not yet come back to its 10-day moving average. But if you take a look at gold, gold is way below its 10-day moving average. So if the correction continues, I think silver needs to plunge a lot more than gold. But I'm going to show you something in a minute that might suggest that that's not going, what's going to happen. It's, this, these are not normal economic times. So basically, at this point, anything can happen. Here is the gold-silver ratio. By the way, if you click on any of these labels or the price on any of these charts, it drills down into much more another page with much more interactive charting that you can use. But the gold-silver ratio has been rising recently, which means silver is falling faster than gold, which is normal. That should be what happens in a pullback, but it's not falling that much faster. And when you take a look at something called the commitment of traders, and I usually reserve this analysis uh, only for my, um, my insiders, but what you notice is that as gold rises, uh, the commercials here, as gold rises from lows, these blue, this blue area is the commercial net shorts, the big bullion banks. And they increase their position. And then uh, they cover whenever it's doing a pullback. And when they buy back their short position, they make a profit. Um, and what you're seeing here on gold, now. Uh, this report is from August 4th. So in the next few days, we'll get the August 11th report. They hold it for a few days. So these are from Nick Laird at Stock Charts Are Us. You should go visit his site. He's a great guy. Uh, he's, he lives in Australia. Um, and uh, Nick doesn't, you know, he do, didn't publish this until August 10th. Uh, it takes uh, probably until August 9th. I can't remember exactly right now, but it takes a few days for them to release the information, even though the Commodities Exchange knows this stuff and they know it right away. It doesn't take them three days to uh, collect and analyze the information. They could post it right away, but they don't. They keep it secret for several days. Then they release it when you're halfway through the, the, to the next week. Uh, but what you're seeing here is very little covering, um, and uh, that would be they probably added to their shorts a little bit because this is August 4th. So that would be about here in the price before this little blow off top. But when the next one comes out, uh, so that would be for the 11th, the one after that, you will probably see a whole lot of covering uh, with them getting ready for the next big price rise. Price ri big price rises usually start from very low here, they were, the commercials were actually long. And so at one of the lowest prices in, in uh, the last couple of years, the commercials went long. And then as the price has been rising, they've been going short. And they, when the price falls, they buy back those shorts and they make a profit. Silver, a little bit of a different story here. And, and you can see that when they're maximally short, uh, the price after that falls and they cover their shorts and they make a bunch of profit on that. And then uh, here the price is rising, they go short, and then the price falls and they cover and they make a profit on all of that. Um, same thing here, the price rises, uh, they go short, and then uh, they cover as the price falls. They made, the bullion banks made a killing off of everybody that, uh, uh, that 
sold their gold and silver during this. That's when they're buying. They're buying during this collapse in price that happened in March, where silver went from uh, almost 19 bucks down to 11 something. Uh, the bullion banks made a killing off of that, so they they typically do the opposite. But during this big price rise, you know, they they increased their shorts a little bit, but not much. And then they actually covered uh, back. That's back here before this price rise. They covered a little bit of their shorts before that price rise, and then did not increase their short position that much. On this pullback, they're going to cover this. I'll bet that uh, when, you know, uh, two weeks from, a, a, a week and a half from today, you're going to see uh, charts come out. Uh, next week's chart is going to include the data from the 11th. So that's today. Um, but they're not going to release that data for several days. Uh, it's the week after that that you'll get the, uh, the report uh, that will cover the big pullback, if this pullback continues, uh, it'll cover the data where they cover all of their shorts and get ready to let silver run. Uh, and then it's hold on to your hat, folks. So uh, I think that what we're going to see uh, in this uh, coming, the coming weeks is hopefully this correction, a chance to buy, and then when prices get going again, I think that it's really off to the astronomical prices I was talking about in the last video. Uh, Peter Ryan says, if the most bullish and informed people on gold are those that sell gold, why are they selling it for fiat? Well, Peter, uh, as a dealer, uh, we don't, I don't know about other dealers. Um, de all dealers, none of them are selling their own precious metals. What they do, what we do, is uh, you make an order and I buy from a supplier. There's uh, mints and refineries and other wholesale suppliers uh, that we purchase from. And then there's a tiny, minuscule little profit. This is a highly competitive business that is so tough that in a good year, a really good year, you'll make one or two percent profit. The other years sometimes cost you to stay in business. Uh, it is a ruthless, tough business. Usually, companies operate on a profit margin, a markup of 30%, or maybe even 100% on some products. When you buy most products, you're paying uh, somewhere between, you know, gasoline and groceries are a little bit different. Those profit margins are a bit lower. But most products, you're looking between 30% to 100% markup. And with the precious metals, uh, you know, at the end of the year, if you end up with just a just one percent or two percent, you really did well. So, Peter, it's not me selling my gold and silver. I have been accumulating gold since 2002 and silver since uh, April of 2003. And I don't sell. I keep on adding to my position, getting ready for a total economic catastrophe that I think is, you know, I was getting ready for just big profits when there was going to be a big crash. And, but they didn't let the crash finish. According to the Dow Gold ratio, PE ratios, everything else there is, they did not let the crash finish in 2008. So I didn't like take all of my profits then and turn them into something like real estate or uh, high dividend yield stocks or something or owning businesses or something like that. What I did was I just kept on accumulating and I'm still accumulating. I don't sell my own gold and silver. When you buy, we purchase from a supplier and sell it to you. And then I take a tiny, 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 tiny portion of that purchase and I buy gold and silver for myself, getting ready for what's inevitable. So if you got anything from this video, please like it, share it, uh, and, and uh, give us that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and go to my website and download a free copy of Guide to Investing in Gold and Silver. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.